You don't, you don't mix in a seat no. with like <laughs> you serious? I don't. Oh, Christian is one of them, man. Well, further ado, our esteemed guest, <laughs> our esteemed <laughs> the uh, Christian stuff. Get it, get it, get it. Um, Tell us I, a little bit about yourself, man. I I'm not too much. Um, I've been in the educational system for about um four to five years. I took a break in between just to pursue some further education. Um, I'm a science teacher which means I teach junior and senior health science, general science, bio combined science. Okay. All uh, right. And it's, it's been a good journey. I also tell people it's a profession of love and passion. You go in with passion and love and you need it. You honestly need it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's about me. Being in born, bred, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. I can't have you. Can't. So how long have you been teaching now? Like I said, for about, I might do three years. Three years. In Abaco, I was on the island, the family island. Okay. And then I took a break and then I came back and now I'm teaching at the distinguished school of number one choice, St. John's College, yeah. home of the mighty Grand Giants. Boy, someone, <laughs> hey, if, if, if you don't have your pride, your pride. Hey. Yeah, they don't pay me for that. I just endorse not for yeah. free, but. That's me, somebody can hear that nigga love that. Yeah. <laughs> I love that for you, man, because I, I remember having a conversation with you yes. where, I, where you, before you was to St. John's. And the conversation was a little different now. I can, I can, I can, I can feel the radiance right now. I love it. I love it, man. I love that for you. I'm the model, so the love there, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. That's good. So, um, I'd like to throw a question out there. You know, simple question. You know, ease, ease us into ease us into the ease of podcast. Um, we all be aiming now. You know, mm-hmm. every be aiming is pretty much say the same thing on a day to day basis as far as. From from the beginning of the morning, mm-hmm. if you ain't tuna and grits, it's sausage and grits. It's, yeah. You mm-hmm. know, we all are seeing the same thing in the morning. Yeah, you yeah. understand? <laughs> so my question to you is, it's it's kind of a compound question, uh, but yeah. straight up, I feel like you get away going with this. What is your go-to Bahamian breakfast and your favorite Bahamian breakfast? Because it's, 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 it, the go-to could, you know, that's what you slap up and go with. Yeah, yeah. But your favorite is, you know, that, that one could take a little bit more time mm-hmm. or you might have to go out the way to get that one. Mm. All right, my, my go-to, like early in the morning, I rush in, when I get in and out, Boom. I'd say one egg and cheese sandwich. Okay, okay. I, I, I got some every beam man that egg and cheese sandwich just be slapping. Yeah, every bit, every bit. Mm-hmm. 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 Just to scramble it up. Just and scramble, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's scramble it up. Show them some bread and goat. You know, but my favorite, if I had to sit down and, and I had the time, I would say tuna and grits. Okay. Tuna and grits, just, that's the go to. Just the OG. That's the OG. OG. That's the OG. You can't. Really fit in it. You put a little sausage in there too. Ooh, all right, that's right. Ooh, right, that's right. Right, that's right. Sausage into it. Okay. Combo. Okay. Combo. 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 I bet that's a top three behemoth in breakfast. Yeah, man. The tuna gotta be spicy, too. Yeah. Yo. It's a real vibe in Johnson City, dog. You know? Oh, I do it back when you perfect her. Part of what do you even care to feel? That only time will reveal. Tease up and stay strong. Focus on love and not on what do you even know? Do you feel like we really, or your average Bahamian, do you feel like we really value education as we should? And why, why, why do we or why don't we? All right, um, that's a pretty good question. Um, I'll start off basically what you were saying, right? We see all the quotes, education is the passport to the future, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, change to society, um, invest in education. We've all seen it, we've all seen the pretty headlines. Mm-hmm. And so, even though we notice and you know we tend to write it down and we tend to put it out there, um, it's on our newspapers and the news everywhere. I don't think that the average behemoth um, really values education. Mm. Um, and not just education formally, but um, all forms of education, be it um, vocational, um, academic, I don't think they value it. And it's, it's pretty evident 
throughout our society, all right, with our with our youths, with our teenagers, um, the emphasis on education, I personally feel, is not there. And like you said, if you look at um countries where education has been um, number one friend. on priority, they tell that they tend to excel in certain things, they right. accomplish mm-hmm. certain things. You see this happening and that happening. And right now in the Bahamas, um, we're, we're stagnant. We I think. I feel like we've been 45 for a while, but we still have not <laughs> been, <laughs> been 45, 45, 45 for six, a while. Seven, you know? yes. <laughs> but, you know, approaching um, 50 mm-hmm. and uh, still a relatively young country, but I feel as though our growth is in matching my um, uh, yes, and it's because of education. Mm. All right. Um, yeah, we push um, doctors, we push lawyers, we push all these things, but I don't feel as though we um, open up the whole um, compass of it. Mm. And we can look at I'm glad that um, the University of Bahamas is making strides, is trying to offer education. Um, same thing with Big DVI, but I still feel as though with an individual households and within our country, mm-hmm. um, we're still seeing a lot of, you know, nonchalant when it comes to education. Very mm-hmm. true. That's very true. You know, and I, I, that's with down to budget cuts, that down to children just not showing to school, mm-hmm. that's down with parents not being involved. And so the whole attitude around it is, you know, eh, it is what mm. it is. Mm. Send your child to school, 16 years, 18 years, let them get whatever they get, and then, you know, you're on your own. And so we, we need to see more investment from that, from a, a micro level, from a family level, being more involved with your kids, all the way up to a institutional level, schools offering more programs, more outreach to children, more trying to catch those um, that fall into the the crops right, uh, right. the government level where we see now policies being implemented. I keep telling people, yeah, the government is good when they come down to level and do these things, gives a give a desk to a teacher right, and all right. that stuff. But the government really is there for policy making. And so we want to see a serious change in education. We need to see a serious reform in our educational policies. Mm. And so that's what I'm thinking. Okay. That's that's beautiful, and I I what I what I really really took from that is like it it ain't something above even though like you say policies are essential yeah but even more essential or something that me you everyone could do is in the family household uh-huh. it starts there so true it okay. starts there yes. all right so I would like to take a quick moment to say that this episode was brought to you by seven three. Uh, 7-3, for those of you guys who don't know, it's a creative studio where you can come in and get tumblers, t-shirts, graphic designs done, and that's just for almost any occasion. If you travel in, sports teams, family trips, if you and your family are about to go bottle it out in one bowling tournament, y'all could get separate family jerseys. It's just, you can come in and whatever you want to bring to life, 7-3 helps you get it done follow them on all their social medias seven underscore three that's on twitter and instagram and then seven three on facebook give a fool a million dollars and they'll squander that mm-hmm. at no time because you know they, they're not educated about money management and right. educated mm-hmm. about um why spending um mm-hmm. financial literacy and so education should be ingrained in our people and even when you look at foreigners when they come in um, to be educated, they don't take it for granted. Not at all. They they excel in the right. classroom, mm-hmm. you know. They're beating um their native counterparts mm-hmm. it's because they think that education is their only way out from you know Whatever the harsh is. reality mm-hmm. that they're going through. They mm-hmm. they realize that education is their key mm-hmm. um to better, and I think that we need to realize that too. We want to see some changes, and we want um the Bahamas to go from A to B. We need a more educated society. Mm-hmm. And same, same with violence. I always tell people um, um, conflict resolution is a higher level skill. You know what I mean? An educated mind knows how to resolve conflict. conflict yeah. And so we see a lot of these violent crimes. The education goes way past the classroom. We see these violent crimes. We see um, these um, teenagers, these youths killing one another. Mm-hmm. It's because they lack education. They lack the, the ability to sit down and have that thought process, which is learned through, you know, education, learned through that educational system. No one's saying that you have to be an A math student, right. you have to be this, but if you're if you if you take the time to be educated as an educated mind, there's certain skills that you're gonna pick up and mm-hmm. conflict resolution is one, of, one them. of them. Yeah. That's very true. That's, that's very beautiful. True. That's a good tidbit from there. That's a that's a gem. Yeah, man. That's, people think it's just mm-hmm. 
writing down books, BJC, BJC, right. you no know, mm-hmm. education is, you know, it's the literal building be- blocks of life. It's the literal yes. betterment of yourself, right? It is. Like you said, building blocks. Mm-hmm. So I have, I, have a, I have a question. So, um, but this sort of stems back on to something we were talking about earlier when you were saying you want to see like the government, I guess, sort of get more involved when it comes to education and implementing different policies and different things like that. So my question is, uh, what is, in, in your years of teaching, what is something that you've seen the government implement that you actually can say has helped the education system, if there's anything? <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no harm to the government. You yeah. know, just being a critical person, I yeah. felt as though um, we haven't seen um, mm. as much involvement. Mm. Yeah, or things that I feel was really um, beneficial to um, the educational system. Um, okay. I do love the idea when they came in with the National High School Diploma. I do feel as though we need a standardized mm. um, way of making sure that all children leave in. Um, school is on the same level, mm-hmm. but I think the inner workings of it and the details of it needs to be um, readjusted and, mm-hmm. and, and smoothed over. So, but okay. the idea was the idea of it was um, mm. pretty good. Okay. Um, Question on that. While you were on that, yes. um, is that is there is there a way for someone to tinker or to adjust that the way that is done? Yeah, it, it just needs to. Um, they can always um, bring it bring it to the table. They can always, um, you know, go through it, address it, have it passed through the different um, legislations that it needs to pass. I'm not too um, technical on that. Right. But, you know, you can't you can sit down. You can't take something off and you can't look at it and you can't see, okay, what can we do to change this? How can we improve this? And then you can um, re-implement it or, you know, bring it back with some changes. And so I feel as though that's what they need to go um, to do because mm-hmm. um, right now it's a bit... It, it, it doesn't line up with our system. It was, mm. it, it, they pulled it from somewhere and they just, when well, it changes, they just bring it here. Bring it in, and we see, we see the government do that in a lot of different industries over here. So yeah, it sounds like you need to be more fluid. It needs to be a conversation for sure. Yeah. yeah. But definitely, so it's a, it, it was an initial good idea. Yeah. And then as I, I know, just hearing some tips, tip, there wasn't much involvement with teachers when it came to this. Mm. And okay. so, 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 wait, 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 what? Yeah, so you have persons who, who haven't been in the classroom in a while or who have never stepped foot in the classroom, uh, basically um, talking about certain things, you know, basically making these decisions. And it's like, you didn't know the inner workings of, of what's happening. Right. You know, and so I think that's what needs to be addressed. Mm. Um, there, like I said, there's some policies. I like the fact that they made um, the DVI as well as the University of the Bahamas, they made them um, basically technically free. Uh, there was there was always a scholarship there, but they made it more accessible for those um, who who cannot maintain a let's say a higher um, GPA. But right now mm-hmm. it's bare minimum. It's available to all persons, and so I think we're going to see a bit more. And say four to five years, we're going to see a bit more persons uh, teaming some type of tertiary education or some type of tertiary exposure. Right. All right. So I think that's pretty good. But we can we can still see some more improvements. Well, <laughs> it was a tough question, but you give us a really good answer. Oh, <laughs> I like that. You give us a really like good that. answer. I like that. I like that. But I know for sure um, what what really startled me in, in that answer just now was the fact that people who aren't in the actual industry mm. aren't in the decision making process. So if if I could take something out of that, that could that could be a solution in, in that situation is when you're making these decisions at least have one or two people in the situation or mm-hmm. in that mm-hmm. in that environment to give they don't necessarily have to be the one making the decisions but, but to, to influence it a bit you know so they to stay even, our people in the right way so they don't even like send you know, like, a, like a survey no not that much <laughs> <laughs> survey <laughs> help us out like with this something, man we got, but, we got a radio so if we look at it in, in the Bahamas uh, we find out that a lot of these areas lack specialists. Mm, and okay. so, and I think that's something I need to work on too. There's no way we should have a ministry based on envir- environment and, you know, but we don't have nobody actually on who actually specialize in environmental science. Mm. Or we have somebody and like education, but nobody there is an educator. Mm. And so I think a lot of times that's what causes us. We just have lawyers, right. lawyers, you know? And so 
they they try their best, but from an intellectual standpoint, yeah, mm-hmm. they try to sympathize, but they cannot empathize mm-hmm. um, with it because they've never been, been there. In never, this. they don't understand what's happening. So certain mm-hmm. things, they just think of it as a as a nuisance. Right. You know, is, is it that serious? Really, do we have to do that? And it's just because they don't um, have that knowledge, they're, they're not specialized in that story, and so they're just thinking from their mindset. But we need to see more specialists. Um, Throw the ministry is um, employ people who actually went off and and pursued this as a career and get them to come in and give you know a really specialized answer and not just a mm. general um, answer. Oh, I love that. Okay. Yeah. I love that. That's answers. That's what we come here for. We come here to talk about the problem and we come here to try and try to make answers. Yeah, my someone here, someone listening, someone might have the influence, might have, or even if it's just us when, when we get yeah. there. But we, no. we want to at least be able to say we could come up with a solution one way or another. Enlighten a few things. Yeah, show man. Because so exactly. what I think what I think at the end of the day, as as a young Bahamian, um, a lot of the problems that we see, we look at it as, I can't do nothing about it. Or mm-hmm. it's been like this for mm-hmm. him. Or, yeah. What could I do about it? That's just the way it is. Or if this person couldn't do anything about it, why why y'all think I could do something? So like, it, it, yeah. we, we just want to talk about the, the fact that it ain't impossible to come up with a solution. No. Is your computer stuck in safe mode because of unsafe downloads? Are you tired of knockoff accessories that leave your device worse than before? Solve those problems and more here at Create Tech Bahamas. Bring in tomorrow's technology to your doorsteps today. This is this something that we never see before. Mm-hmm. We used to a standard way of teaching. We used to BJC is all the time, our coursework and this, and we haven't, everybody gone through the pain of the, uh, of the East traffic and mm-hmm. we was used to all of that, but it, this is a different time. It's a lot of virtual, it's a lot of assisted ways of learning. How, the pros and cons in this, shoot them at me. All right, I'll, I'll start with the, the cons first. Um, what I like tell people too is, firstly, um, you always look at our students, all right? So a lot of times we just look at it being hard for um, teachers, we have to realize this is a new way of learning. This is the most um, difficult time for our students. All right? So a lot of the students that are having problems coping when it comes to virtual, right? So think about it. Yes, it was hard for us, like all the things you mentioned in the beginning, mm-hmm. but now they're faced with a whole new set so of I can imagine. You know, dynamics. And we might take it for light because we're like, oh, I used to go through this. I used to go through this. Right. But trust me, what they're going through right now between this flip-flopping between virtual and face-to-face it's a lot from the handle. And what I try to do is try to be a bit reasonable and understand that, hey, this is a new way of learning it. And some of these children are so burnt out and the inconsistency has, has mm-hmm. killed it for them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, one month they in, next month they back home. Right. So it's like they never really got into a routine. Mm-hmm. And so that's that's killing them. That's killing a lot of them. I, 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 I witness it with my students um, between virtual and face-to-face. And it's just... It's just killing them. They're, they're burnt out. You yeah, can imagine yeah. being in front of a laptop from eight fifteen to three o'clock, mm-hmm. five times a week. Five times a week, and so that just me. They're, they're burnt out, and they're just getting all this information um, throughout it. And so that um, is one, I think one of the major cons when it comes to this virtual thing. And then that just opens the door for many other things, such as um, we don't know their home life. We mm-hmm. don't know if there are um, equipment materials to engage um, efficiently right. in mm-hmm. virtual learning. Um, you know, we have households where there's one device. We have three students mm. in a class. I can imagine. I, I feel like that's that's pretty you know, prevalent. It's a yeah, lot. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, family dynamics. And, and though you want to be hard on them, when you hear some of the excuses, well, I don't even want to call them excuses, but when you hear some of the reasons mm. why they can come in, it's like as much as you, you want it, you have to understand, yeah. I, you know, I understand. I have a, I have a student, like, um, two little, basically infant, um, younger siblings. They home with them too. They got a babysit. And we all know um, infants, you can't leave them. No, right. For long. That's, that's responsibility. And, you know, and so when it's like that, uh, Mr. Stubbs, give me a minute. I got to go um, warm this bottle. Oh, you know, wow. what I can say, and I, I can hear the child in the background crying. Right, so, yeah. But I can say, oh, no, you in glass. So... You have to be more reasonable. Never, I nice. never, never thought of that. Yeah. And so, see, we take it for light because all we're thinking is, oh, if I was home all day for school. That, what? I ain't got to get up and. My books there. Right. You know, everything virtual. We're thinking it's a breeze. But for them, it's really, it's really playing on them a yeah, lot. Yeah, because a lot of them, like, because a lot of them, 
they used to come to school to get away from mm. a lot of the things that was happening at home. So now when you're home and you add in the pressure of trying to do their school, be in school at the same time in an environment where they it be using school to avoid. Yeah. It's like a he's like, how do you how, how do you balance that? Yeah, it's a it's a play on them, you know. And um that's one of the major things. And then um also some children just aren't meant for that distant learning. Some mm-hmm. children um prefer the face to face. Especially with um certain schools, private schools, you, you're basically paying your money for intimate um teaching. You're right, that's very true. That mm-hmm. teacher one on one one on one experience. Right. And so on a virtual, it kind of make that hard. And some children really need um, to be in school. They really need to be there. The teacher should be on them. Because mm-hmm. um, children want to be children at the end of the day. We want to be responsible by the end of the day. They're going to do t- How things realistic as a, is it? Yeah, as a child does. Mm-hmm. And so they're going to be negligent. They're going to get sidetracked. That they're in class, but they're on Facebook. They're in class, but they're playing games. They, they're going to be children. They're right. going to be off task. They mm-hmm. can't, I can't pay attention for so long, so I can imagine mm-hmm. a child. Like, you know, I can imagine who, who doesn't even see the true value of what they're doing at the time. Yeah, you know, and and I also say this could be a con and a pro, but I think that it kind of pushes teachers beyond the limits. We have to now reinvent the wheel. We have to find new ways mm-hmm. of teaching. It ain't no longer you just um have a read it off, put it on the board, letting them write notes all the time because no, you can't do that for two periods. You can't mm-hmm. engage a student. Um, who's being to class all day just by doing that. And so we have to basically come up with new things. I always try to find a new creative way to say, okay, I'm going virtual. What am I going to do? And I personally don't keep them for, if, the, if you have a double period, which is like an hour and 20 minutes, right. I'll keep them for 50 minutes. It makes sense. Because I feel as though after that, they then, bam, mm-hmm. it's, it's gone. Mm-hmm. And I, I notice it too. And mm-hmm. not just the lazy students. You know, you have those exceptional students. They'll be like, wow, Mrs. Hubs, that, that was a lot. And I have to understand, yeah, it, it, it's a lot, especially during virtual, it's a lot. Mm-hmm. And so we have to, um, teachers, it's, I know it's a lot on us and the resources are already limited and we, we know we don't get no extra compensation, but we have to meet them. We have to try to see what we can do mm-hmm. um, to meet them there. Meet and, them, at least meet them halfway. Yeah. And so, and lastly, what I think is one of the good things is some things I feel as though should stay virtual. Right, the virtual has shown us that's interesting. Um, that's different interesting, yeah. ways to do different things. Okay. And I think that was a great improvement um, to what was already in place. And so, for example, okay. um, let's say the parent-teachers conference where mm-hmm. parents come in, talk to teachers, and so on. Um, for the past few years, it's being held virtually. Okay. And we've seen a greater um, Number of attendance, I can imagine. That's, that's beautiful, okay. Because we have, we have parents who can't, who really can't leave their workspace. Mm-hmm. Right. And so for and them, they they're just... Time to just open up the laptop. Yeah, they'll sign off for one five minutes, talk to the teachers they need to, go from there to there, and bam, never left work. But now the face-to-face, they have to find time to leave, mm-hmm. come in, try to see as much as they can, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then return to their job. But we found out that the virtual um, has allowed a lot of them to um, participate. Um, you know, because we have a lot of parents that want to be involved, mm-hmm. but, you know, they got to find a way to keep the mm-hmm. lights on. They have mm-hmm. a job, you know, they can't leave. Mm-hmm. And so we find out that you've seen a great, I talking about a large increase of parents coming like into the parents. Oh, that's, 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 that's a good pro. I yeah, that. so yeah. I think that's one of the good things. And a lot of other, other things, too, um, throughout that we should look forward as, hey, even though we're returning face to face, let's let's keep this virtual. Let's. You know, let's implement this, make this permanent. Has that been a discussion between the oh, teachers the and your administration as well? As is, has that been like, okay, we know we're moving back to we the 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 initiative is to move back towards the classroom. Yes. But is there the conversation to say this works better this way? Um, there has been, I think, mainly from teachers. But what we find out, I don't know if you all pay attention to, but um, especially on the social media and stuff, mm-hmm. there's been a lot of pushback from let's say parents to them. Mm-hmm. They just Hey, we want, we want, we want to take this off us and put all this back but, on y'all. Yeah, so I, we, I, I we want to detach like, ourselves seen, from this. I've seen that. You know, teachers, what y'all doing? We don't want to deal with these children no more. You know, <laughs> take them and we don't want nothing to do with it. Mm-hmm. So a lot of persons want to go back to where the things is because we all know great change is met with great resistance. Every time. Mm-hmm. And so um, our public and, and stuff, they're not really as welcoming with the changes because all they know is, oh, teachers getting it too light. Mm-hmm. Oh, teachers getting it too easy. You know, and I think it's, it's an insult. Yeah, but you know. like you said, um, if you don't value or you don't, if you don't 
cherish the actual thing that you have you always gonna neglect it you always gonna look at it as a hindrance mm-hmm. if i have a hundred if i have a hundred dollars in my pocket in once and and it keep falling out it keep falling out but i don't understand that you know i i understand that at the end of the day it's a hundred dollars i need to keep this in my pocket yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> i need to keep this here yeah, it's, it, 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 but as a child if, if, I, if i'm a child this is a bunch of paper let's go all over the place you know, see, you know but they're not they're not they're not thinking about it and i think that's one of the you know as a teacher, I read in the comments, I've seen it and all that stuff. It's a very, you know, it's unwelcoming. Mm. And as we go on, you know, I'll, I wanted to mention it, but we, we've seen a lot of persons leaving the profession, you know, and because we, we see the changes that are, are good. We want to stick with this. We want to do this, but we're met with this resistance from parents and the public. And they basically just don't want our job to be easier. Need peace of mind that comes in the form of around-the-clock surveillance? Trust our technicians here at Create Tech Bahamas to give you the vision you need to sleep soundly. Create Tech Bahamas, bringing tomorrow's technology to your doorsteps today. As a child of a teacher, um, I get a little inside look on what a day, a day, what a day is in the life of a teacher, you know, from a day-to-day basis, um, how early they get up, if they have to get up early, you know, what time they for what time they go to bed in between what goes on through that throughout that day mm. and i would like to get your insight on it because for the most part i feel if if someone is in closely connected to someone who is a teacher or in that in the education environment they wouldn't necessarily know what you guys go through so give 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 us a a, a little background on some details all right um basically like you mentioned um teaching is in is until three o'clock. Our right? teaching goes way beyond um, knockoff time. Um, playing, I'm sure playing teachers are carrying home work, um, are carrying home, um, you know, side assignments, um, things that need to be submitted. They carry it home, and a lot of time teachers, um, you go into their household, they got papers on the table, oh, boy. they got the students' mm-hmm. books here, and so a lot mm-hmm. of times they they carrying the professional um, work home to their personal life, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. people don't really account for that. They didn't get Oh, well, they get up at three o'clock, you know, they have long summer breaks. Oh, and so they think that um, it's easy for teachers. By the time summer come around, we're, we're completely blown, blown out from yeah, what I see, right? You know, we're completely blown. And with the virtual, it's like you're on the clock 24-7 now. Yeah, that's a, that's a different, you know I mean? that's a different one now. Students have that 24-7 access to you. I could be 11 o'clock in the night and I'm seeing <laughs> emails from my students. You know what I mean? It's not I was in the school today, but see the work, yeah. You know right, what I mean? Right, so right, who's right. looking at anything at 11 o'clock in the night? <laughs> but that's just how it is. And prisons mm-hmm. don't, and we don't realize that, you know, they might be doing a work, they have an assignment. Usually they have to wait till the next day to see you in school. Mm-hmm. But now a simple email, hey, um, I was doing this. I didn't understand it. Bam. And so now you're, you're never off. You're always there. And I think a lot of time teachers help make that stand to separate that professional and that personal because if not mm. the lines I, tend to I, get I, I very, could, uh, right you know, i could imagine i could imagine you know and, and a lot of times we take on the burdens of um students we tend to go that extra mile um teachers are there um way after hours some some teachers are even there on weekends mm. you know just to finish up syllabus just to go over coursework right. just to do certain things you know mm. they're going into their own pockets because resources aren't there and things need to get done and you know and they care about their students and they want to see the students um go from here to here and so a lot of them making the sacrifice or the little they have or the little time or the little money um you know and teachers we are family too we go home to families that we have to tend to and so it's hard trying to separate your work family mm-hmm. um, from your personal family and i just want the public to realize it isn't what you see up front if you know a teacher if you live with a teacher, um, if a loved one is a teacher, you're gonna realize that we're always on the clock. It's always, mm-hmm. it's always thinking, thinking, you know. And we don't get compensated for that. That's just of the, the goodness of our heart, mm-hmm. you know. And so sometimes I find it a bit um, a guilt trip when persons be like, "Oh, what about the kids?" When you finally decide to make a personal decision to look after your well being right. and to separate um the two lives, mm-hmm. they they guilt you with. What about the kids? Don't you care about the kids? Um, mm-hmm. Yes, I do. But at the same time, if I'm not um, mentally well, if I'm not in a position where um, I'm, I mean, oh, I, I took the time to rest, I took the time to get my mind right, then what good am I to, to, the, kid, to the students? Mm-hmm. And so, you know, just be mindful of what you tell teachers. Um, it's, it's kind of insulting because um, for most parts, 
Um, teachers are really out there. They're really putting for and they're sacrificing. All, they're I, really I, sacrificing. I, you say that word a few times, and that's that's exactly what I took from you know, like my view. It was a whole lot of sacrifice, like, it is. and and if and it, it's easy to blur the lines, like you said. So before we wrap this one up, I just want to put it in in context for the usual person, the the, the usual viewer. When you knock off. Yeah, people. If 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 anybody, most most people when they knock off, they put their phone on. Do not disturb. Mm -hmm. They if if you don't if somebody call you, that ain't your business. Mm -hmm. But a teacher, when they go home, they bring in. They are literally bringing their classroom with them. They have assignments, test papers, lesson plans. They have so much things that they have to bring home on a mm -hmm. daily basis. Even and like he says on the weekends. So it, it it's the exact opposite of an easy job, if you ask me. I think it's one of the most important jobs are one of the hardest jobs in the circuit. So, so well, as we wrap up, I have one more thing I want to ask you. So as, as we wrap up, what is one piece of advice you would like to just leave with, let's say, parents watching right now? Um, my number one advice is always being involvement. Uh, make sure that you're involved. With your child, make sure you're knowledgeable about what's happening with them while they're at school, mm -hmm. um, what they're falling back on, what mm -hmm. needs the, um, extra attention. Mm -hmm. And so that's always my advice. Parents, be involved. You know, take to the community. It's, you know, parents, teachers, students. We need all persons involved to get a really good end mm -hmm. result. And that's okay. all I would say. Like well, like and another thing I wanted to get to you before we, you know, get to where we wanted to get, I know... Like I say, from the outside, look, I'm also on the inside looking in. Because <laughs> like I say, I, I, I grew up in that background. Um, I know that it's a woman-dominated field, like by far, like bar none. You, 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 you might see a, you the P teacher, you know, yeah. maybe the art teacher, music, some music, uh, right. But it's not, it's not, you know, it's a, it's a, a female-dominated area. Mm -hmm. How... What are the pros and cons and that? Is it do you do you even like it? Um, well, I'll start off with saying with um being a male teacher, um, it isn't difficult, but it is a I would think that it's a greater burden. And all because of how our society is, is set up. We have a lot of single parent homes. We have a lot of um students who don't know what it is to have a strong male figure in their mm -hmm. lives. And so as a male teacher, the burden is even much heavier okay. because okay. now um they're looking to you to, to fill the road you have you have misguided um teens um females and males and um each of them come with their own um sets of baggage sets of baggage and sets of challenges because of the accent um father um right. for example males tend um they tend to have this false image of manhood and so you're really violent aggressive yeah so you're really grappling to deal with them and to see and to them to see a male um excelling academically it's 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 eye-opening to them because even yeah. i had a student said you know mr stubbs um you're pretty cool for someone who's so smart and i was like why, why smart why, people <laughs> can't be cool why why right. you know, why differentiate it you know and they don't think that learning and education and excelling is something that a man man should mm. do and that's because they, it's what they're seeing right. you know they, they're they seeing men being emotionally available. Even the yeah. way I talk to them and the way I reason with them and I try to understand where they're coming from, they're not used to a male doing that with them. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, that's um, something that they're gonna have to adapt to. And I, and as a male, I had to realize that a lot of times, just the way um, I dress, I have the eye in my clothes to make sure that I'm presented in a clean and a neat image because this is what they're gonna see. This this the model that I, I'm giving to them, showing mm -hmm. them that, hey, this is what a man is. Mm -hmm. And then another time with females, um, females, we don't understand too. We always think that a, a man, a male needs a man's life, but it's equally important mm -hmm. for a female to have a strong, outstanding um, mm -hmm. man as well. I found a lot of females when I first came, um, I could tell the ones, they're, they're a bit resilient to my presence, mm -hmm. right? Because, you know, a man hasn't been present in their life and they only associate me with um, negative things. And mm -hmm. so they're a bit resilient to it. And so, but as we go through that, I just show them that, hey, you know, I also tell them, hey, the love of Jesus. I love all like <laughs> Jesus loved his disciples. To right. show them that, you know, it's really, it's really open. And, and, mm -hmm. male, and females tend to um, attract towards yeah, okay. the men in their life. And so if the men in their life um, don't amount to nothing, they're going to 
you know, follow a trail of men that don't amount to nothing. Mm-hmm. So I also to show them too um, how, how how a man should be, you know, how a man should carry himself, how a man should talk. You know, I always tell them, you know, I always tell the male students, hey, y'all, we talk, we talk our ladies, you know, and they laugh about it. But I'm trying to subconsciously show them, hey, this is what it's supposed to be too. And this is why we tend to see a lot of females too. They tend to, you know, we have this epidemic now in the, in the Bahamas where we, we see a lot of our female um, teenagers going missing. And, you know, there's always a story that mm-hmm. um, some somebody's preying on them. And mm-hmm, it's because mm-hmm. they're, they're looking for love, you know, they're looking for a, a, a man's love and unfortunately that comes in all um shapes and forms right. mm-hmm. and so i have to show them that listen you know this is how a, a man should treat you um you know this this what it means to have a father in your life this is what it means you don't have to go looking you don't have to go above and beyond you don't have to you know sell yourself out right. and so i found out that um besides teaching my position there my presence there as a as a male um, is is important. It's crucial, mm-hmm. and, and even if I'm not feeling my best, even if I um, I'm off my game, I have I have to always show the them. Mm-hmm. I always show them the strong um, manhood. I show them what it means to be a real man emotionally, um, you know, socially, mm-hmm. uh, and all of that. And I think that's what it is. Every male teacher can understand that. You know, every teacher, mm-hmm. male teacher, because we do have some teachers that you know take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. But you have to be a strong male and. You have to show them what it means. So know? my uh, my follow up question to that: mm-hmm. Why it's on? Why you don't see males in the schools as much as females per se? Or? Um, that's easy because um, even the few males that we have, we find out a lot of them are leaving, and it's because um, as males we we're, we're supposed to be the breadwinners, all right? A male's supposed to be the breadwinner, and we all know the teaching salary isn't attractive and so as a man i want to take on a family and want to raise a family Mm -hmm. off a teacher's salary it's not possible and so it's not that men um don't like teaching or they don't understand their importance in the system but it's just um me as a family man i can carry home the scraps that they're giving me right and 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 actually make you know a comfortable living for my family and so a lot of men are leaving and that's why too in the educational system they tend to promote men um, so quickly because they know mm. that's the only way to keep them but mm. I also, well, as a teacher i don't even want to be an administrator i don't want to be a senior master i don't want to be a vice principal or principal i love being in the classroom right mm. you know but if you force my hand the only way i need to make more money is by Go leaving the classroom the class. yeah you know, mm-hmm. become an administrator and so a lot of um male teachers are leaving um that's not just even male males and females but the little males that we do have they're leaving because what they're getting is not enough Mm. And it might sound a little shallow to some people, but you have to realize, you know, um, you want to live a comfortable life. You you were educated. You went through um, the system. You, you know, you applied yourself. You made sure that you were certified and all that stuff. And so you want to be compensated for the work that you're putting in. And there's nothing wrong with that. And because you, we aren't, um, we're leaving for a, a better life, right. a better living. Mm. Okay. That's, that's something that... Yeah, man. I think I, I can say that's something that's a lot to unpack because, like you say, the like, like you like you basically said you basically really laid out why it's so important to have, have a male, a male right? in the system. So to we double back on that and be like, but even despite of all of this, we have males just leaving. Mm-hmm. Then I can see how it can create like such a big divide. Big because, like you have people like like yourself who has the passion to want to instill and and i'm sure it's more like things, you too. exactly yeah. and leave things for the next generation but at the same time not to be like you have to be selfish but at the same time you have to look out for your well-being as well you want to have a family exactly yeah. and it's like and you and you want to progress and be able to do more for your students as well and the only way to be able to do that is to improve and not only like your mental but in all other factors of life so it's a it's a bumpy road. I could I could see yeah, it's a bumpy road. It is, it is, man. Man, I <laughs> I wish I, I wish it was that one. That one, we you know, we like solutions, but that one seemed like that one is uphill. Yeah, so, yeah, that a, one that is uphill. But at the end of the day, let's let's give some appreciation to them, man. If you if if we have students watching this, if any students watching this, appreciate you appreciate your teachers, man. They doing they doing a real good job and they trying. They trying their best. They definitely are. And I'd like to once again shout out 
for Stone for coming in and speaking with us sense. and sharing his heart and mind about the education system. I'm hoping everyone who watched this, they you can go and take at least a little something back and understand if you're a parent, you should, you should be able to go back and be like, okay, maybe I need to be more involved with my child now. I need to like start like just getting, a, not even if it's not being on their case, but at least just being a bit more active so I can at least understand what it is they're going through during this process and see mm -hmm. if it's a way that I can make it a bit easier. If you're a student, then just understand that we understand that going through the pandemic and having to go through school and everything is a difficult process, but just stay true to your course. At the end of the day, everything will work out. It'll be worth it. You've, you have Hopefully you have a great support system behind you. And if you don't, we're your support system. That's why. Just me rooting for you right now. So just do whatever it is you have to do to get there. We with you with you, we with you on ease up, man. We with all y'all. We with all y'all. So thank you all for passing through. We have all our descriptions. We have our YouTube link. Uh, everything could be down below. Hit us up on that, man. Appreciate y'all. Focus on